Hello friends. So the next deck that I'm going to do a um, a reading with, a deck interview with, is the Russian Tarot of St. Petersburg. This is really a beautiful, really a beautiful deck, which um, as I was, you know, walking through each card, there's... Um, Somebody who does a review walkthrough of this deck who actually understands the nature of the art in it. And she was saying that um, one of the features of this type of miniature art is its intensely bright colors. And that is so true and it's just very engaging. I can't say that I'm always that keen on like the facial expressions and stuff like that, but it's the color is just luscious. <laughs> Even if there's not very much of it, it's just luscious. Um, yeah. Of course, that, that doesn't bode well because I often do not get along with um, with beautiful decks, but we're going to give it a go here. I'm going to start with my regular deck interview and go on to the dark deck interview. And I'm just going to change it. It's not that dark. I'm going to call it the um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I'll probably continue to call it dark for the time being until I can think of something else. I was thinking before calling it the deep deck interview, but it's more about blind spots. Um, almost like expose, except that's making something more public than this is. I don't know, I'll have to think of something. But we're starting with the regular one and the first card is how would the deck describe itself? Oh, and we have the Hermit. That could be. I don't see very many people using this deck or talking about this deck. The Hermit. It's going its own way in the wilderness. Okay. Um, what is your opinion of me? What is the deck's opinion of me? The Emperor. That's interesting. Um, I don't know that an emperor and a hermit get along awfully well, <laughs> but I think it's indicating to me that it's considering me the boss. I feel like um, it's setting up an interesting dichotomy where it is my servant in some regard. that I can ask of it whatever I will. I am in charge of it, and it is in submission to my will. Something strange like that. Um, what is one thing that you ask of me? This card stock feels really smooth, kind of silky almost. That's interesting. I hadn't noticed that initially, but just holding each card in my hand feels really good. Um, six of Swords. Um, so I can't stop feeling this deck. Um, what is one thing you ask of me? The Six of Swords is a little bit different. Um, what is one thing you ask of me? I don't know. I mean, I don't tend to have questions that directly relate to conflict of it or anything of that sort. But it's like this deck is asking me to avoid conflict or to return it to Avalon, whatever the case may be. And I'm not sure... Um, return it to its homeland. I don't know. 
I'm not I'm not going to be sending it to Russia I will tell you that um, I don't know I mean it hadn't occurred to me to like that I needed to know anything in particular just gonna look at the guidebook it's a thin tiny little guidebook a little tiny but is there oh just um yeah nothing they call it a 10 card spread it's essentially the celtic cross so they, they didn't do any sort of themed um spread with it so i'm not sure what it means quite by the six of swords um, how will this deck challenge me? How will you challenge me? The Fool. This is a little bit of a different Fool card. The, the canine down at the bottom looks like a wolf rather than a dog. And it looks, you know, and this kind of takes more the gestury, um, position of the fool so it's almost as though he's got a wolf at his feet and he's inclined to just continue to make light so it's almost as though it might make light of things when I want it to be serious that's very curious um, what is the potential outcome of our time together? The nine of clubs, but this is not a perfectly traditional nine of clubs. So the, the warrior seems to be um, just fine. How about if you focus on the card? Can you do that instead of snapping into focus on my face? Um, he's holding a club in each hand, and the clubs and the clubs in this deck have spikes on them, so they're not quite as benign as a typical wand. This, this would be the suit of wands, so they're more defensive. Um, so in here, all the spiked ends are downward as opposed to upward. So it's almost like he has ended up with a lot of clubs to use. So he is particularly well armed. Now he doesn't have a sword, so he can be beaten. But for what he's capable of having, he's well armed and alert. So it's... I'm not sure what to make of that either for the potential outcome of our time together. Um, it's interesting too that it should give me the nine of clubs and then one thing it asked of me was the six of swords. Um, so, I don't know sort of a contradiction there. Let's do the last one. What uh, what readings do you enjoy the most? So what kind of readings does this deck enjoy the most? Two of coins. Again, a little bit different than typical because he doesn't seem to be um, juggling them so much as trying to choose he's he's still in a kind of a precarious situation it looks like but he's trying to decide which one to maybe reach down and grab and of course bending down will put him off balance as well so interesting it's also within that um set of cards I've got three majors and one each from 
Oh, excuse me. The suit of swords, clubs, and coins. And no cups. So we're going to move on to the misnamed dark deck interview. And I'm just going to ask it, how are you a dark deck? Two of clubs. I wish I totally understood some of the symbolism in here. I take this because of the two windows back there. There might be kind of more than one religion involved in here whether it's Russian Orthodox or something else so it's curious and he's holding his two clubs so it's more like clubs um, again with the brutal and downward and holding them almost as though he's swinging them around How are you a dark deck? Maybe it's helping me to make those choices. I'm not sure. I'll say this too, that the blacks in this are a very rich black. And so they this in the with the brightness of these colors in here when you set it out the brights really pop out and the blacks almost create a void create a void behind the figures so it has an interesting visual depth to it either that or my eyes have <laughs> have faded in such a way that that's giving this illusion um what blind spots are you good at exposing? Oh, three of coins. Um, and this is another three of coins that's a little different. I might have to get out my, my little magnifying glass, my light, my lighted, the one that has a light in it. It's actually a larger magnifying glass. It has a light in it. So this three of coins is a little different. It has somebody playing a musical instrument, a stringed instrument there. I'm trying to put this in front of my face in hopes that the camera will shift to focus, but it doesn't seem to want to. So, um, and then you've got this figure walking up with with a set of keys in his hand. So blind spots you are good at exposing. Hmm. Oops. Um, I'm going to say potential problems in partnerships. They seem to be not working together, but conferring with one another about something. Um, so what's the next one? In what area of my life am I suffering from a lack of self-knowledge? Here we have the strength card, which is a pretty traditional strength card. So, a lack of self-knowledge. I don't know, my ability to tame beasts. Um... You know, if we take, so I'm still thinking about inflammation. If we take the lion as my physical health and 
the inflammation in my body. I could see me as this person who's been trying to soothe the lion unsuccessfully. I still, I still don't know. I've got two more kind of chemicals to try. Um, what is one specific thing I'm blind to? The devil could also be about inflammation. Um, uh, just the full extent of something that I'm bound up in. I might have partial knowledge, but I'm not completely aware of either how I am enslaved, even though I was represented here as an emperor, how I'm enslaved to something, or how, if I am the enslaver, if I am the devil, how I'm being held back by the things that I am holding on to. I'm not sure I completely get that, but that's all right. And lastly, what is your advice for amending this blindness, the, the devil blindness? The Four of Cups. Drink more water, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm getting this message. Um, don't refuse the water. Take the water. Could also be, again, like I said, I've got two more medications that are new to me to try. So it could be, um, I need to move forward. They're not simple medications that you can pick up at any pharmacy, so I'm kind of dragging my heels a little bit on them. And one of them is kind of expensive. So it's a, it is just, again, I don't think, especially since my camera won't, um, won't focus, but it's just a really beautiful deck to work with. Just a really beautiful deck. So, um, the blues are so blue, the greens are so green, the reds are so red. <laughs> um, without being at all gaudy, right? It just all looks like every piece of clothing is brand new. Every plant is a springtime plant, for the most part. It's very, very beautiful. Um, so that's it. That's my my first playtime with Russian Tarot of St. Petersburg. Um, shuffles also very smoothly, very well. This is uh, U.S. Games cardstock. And again, there's this surface feeling that's super silky um, finish on the individual cards. All right, so that's it for now from the Russian Tarot of St. Petersburg. <laughs>